So the first thing that we want to do when we're decorating our cakes is work on our top tier and our second tier. We need to get the pleats and the cushioning on those done first before we add our shimmer. So first thing that we're going to do is work on the top tier uh, and make our pleats. I'm going to use a two inch divider that I've made up just using a cake plate, a square cake plate cut down um, and this is going to help us get the general angle of our pleats marked out on our cake just to make it easier. So all we need to do is rest it against the cake, can make sure it's nice and straight and make a little pin mark either with a toothpick or a scribe tool like this and then curving it around Go right up against it and we go all the way around the cake like this. We're just going to come up and find one of our holes at the top. Give this a little bit of a bend so it's a bit flexible and can go around the cake. Line up our bottom with our top to about there. And this just gives you a rough outline of the direction that you're heading with all of your pleats. All right, now, so to help make our pleats nice and thin and perfect, I'm going to be using a pasta machine. Um, you can roll it out by hand if you need to, but we're going to need quite a few. So I start by just rolling out uh, some of our just normal fondant, doesn't have any uh, hardener or tylose or anything in it. Just putting the setting onto one, which is the largest and just running it straight through and then I turn it up. So we're going to end up using it on a number six which there's seven settings on this. When I do this I tend to go from setting one, three, five and then six. You don't want to jump too many numbers at once or it'll stretch and create lines on it. Okay so now I'm going to take this and I've got a multi-ribbon cutter. You can use a pizza cutter uh, and just mark out if you don't have something that keeps it nice and centred. But I just like using these because they're fast and easy and we use them in lots of cakes. In order to keep these nice uh, and still supple and soft, I'm using a laminating sheet to hide them in. Uh, and this just means that I can tuck them away and they'll stay nice and soft and they won't crack or dry out. And what we're going to do is take a little bit of clear alcohol and a paintbrush and we're going to apply them to the cake. So what I like to do is just mark out uh, where I want our ending to be. So I, if this is our front, I actually want to be just on the left hand side towards the front. So I'm just going to make a little incision. What I'm going to do is just basically put the glue or in this case the alcohol onto the cake. In, I can do it against one of our stripes that we mark so that we know where it's going. So now we're going to line it up, pressing down and then coming back and you can see that that's created a bit of a bubble but we're just going to slowly smooth it both directions and then take a little bit more of our alcohol on top and just aim it towards there again pinching. Okay so once that's secured you can come along with our craft knife and really gently cut off the base Okay, we're going to apply the alcohol this time to next to the pleat that we have. Don't worry if you go over a little bit because it, the whole thing's going to be covered. And then we're going to come back on this one by a few mils as well. Come over the top. Now that we know the angle that we're heading in, we can start to do the top at the same time as we do the sides. Place our next pleat. over, get the side where you're happy before you start worrying about the top, then come over and we're just going to continue to work our way around the cake. 
as we come up to the top we're just going to start cutting away our excess so that we don't end up with a really large mound there. So coming over, place that one there, come around and then again just smoothing that out. Now we're working into this central point here so I'm just going to cut a little bit off there and a little bit off that side and we can apply that, a little bit of glue to that. Now we haven't got a huge raised up section because every three or four I've just been snipping the little bits underneath. So now we're ready to start on the bellowing cushion effect. We have cut some of the uh, little squares that we're going to need in 50 millimetres, which is two inches. Um, what I did was on the pasta roller, I'd used the number seven, which is the smallest setting and the thinnest. Um, and what we're gonna do is, we're gonna show you our trick to making them. Um, most people just grab them and start squeezing them and sometimes they look great and sometimes they don't. Um, but what we're doing is taking a one inch polystyrofoam ball. Um, I think it comes in like a 23, 24 millimetre over here. Um, and I've cut it just in half. And that is going to be our, our mould and our template for working on um, these little squares. So what I do is just rest that completely there. And then all you do is take the sides, the corners, and just scrunch it up and blunt it down. And because you've got that shape, it stayed nice and puffy. It's going to stay up for us. We're going to let that dry and keep going. I like to do about three or four of these in one hit, just so that they um, firm up enough to touch them and put them onto the cake. So again, just squeezing. I'm going to use um, the clear alcohol again. And this time I'm using a small pastry brush just so I can get a little bit more on in one go. Now everything's going to be covered by either the studs or by the pillows, so it's okay to just go and apply a big section of it just along the bottom. Okay, so we're going to take one of these, rest it up against the cake, give a little bit of a squish on both sides. So now we can apply another one coming along and just press them in. You want the little side sections to overlap a little bit but you also want there to be a fair bit of space between. If they're too close together and you've put the little pillow effect too tight in then you're not going to have room to put a stud in later and so it's going to look a little bit cramped. So just make sure that you're still spacing them out a little bit. So when we're up to our last two, um, it's really important that we take a look at the cake and assess how much room we have and how much gap um, we need to put between them. So what I like to do is just place them onto our um, board here and just get an idea of how much overlap I can do. So we've got it where it's fairly perfect um, in this size for this. So everybody following along should find this really easy. If you're doing a different size and you get to a point where it's not working, you might even need to take off your first one and just have a fiddle with the spacing between them. Um, but you just, the more of them that you're dealing with in this final section, um, the, the better you can spread out the gap or the change that you have to make in your gaps. Now the reason that I don't use sugar glue with this is just that it, it sets up quite quickly and I can't move things around as much. I really just prefer the alcohol because it's a little bit easier. So now picking up our first one, I'm just going to place that in there. And you'll notice that when you're doing them, one side curves a little bit more down and one is naturally a little bit more flat on most of the ones that you make. What we're going to do is use that to our advantage on top and use the one that's a little bit more straight as our top row. So as we continue to make them, I'll make the three more that we need, just keep that in mind that you're looking for one of the sides to be a little bit less curved. Okay, so same as before, 
We've just been adding our clear alcohol. This time we need to be a little bit more delicate because we don't want to get too much of it on the top. And what I'm going to do is look for that straight edge, add that in, give it a little bit of a press and then just slowly press that down until it's flush and level with the top. So this one's got a slight curve and then we'll just bring it down a little bit. Now there's one last thing that I'd like to do before I shimmer the board and that is to put some feet or some legs onto the board. Um, this will just help to give it a little bit more elevation and just become a little bit more glamorous again. Um, because this has been resting now for at least a day, we can actually flip it over onto a tea towel or um, a soft cloth and then taking a template, which we have in our materials list, our template guide for you. You know where your centre is because you've already marked that before. So you just line that up and take the feet which are already sticky and just place them out past there, giving a nice press so that they're on. So I'm taking some clear alcohol and I'm taking a bridal white. You could use a bridal white um, or an off-white or an ivory. And I'm just going to be adding that into the clear alcohol. And I'm using um, a really splayed out brush that's super fine, super soft. You want to get a feel for your paintbrush and make sure that you don't have anything that's going to be coarse on the cake. It needs to be really delicate and fine. So I've added the alcohol in with it. You can see it's, I'm just getting rid of any of the clogs. Now I'm going to wipe off quite a good deal of it. And then I'm just going to go around in a circular motion and start painting. We'll take our cake. I've got our bottom tier and I've just got it resting onto um, a cake board, uh, sorry, a cake tin. What we want to do is work on the sides first. We want to go all the way around the side and then we'll finish on top same circular motion. Again, it's going to have another cake on it so we don't have to go all the way in. But because it is a hexagon, so we've got angles jutting around, we want to only leave a small gap in the centre because you don't want to have a situation where one of those angles ends up revealing a little bit of bare cake. Okay, so today is a new day. We have allowed it uh, to dry now, all of our paint. So what we're going to do is make the gold studs that go in between our cushioning. So roll out a bit of icing, uh, just regular fondant. If you want to use a pasta machine, that's fine too, but we don't want to go too thin with this. So we're just going to roll out a small section. We're going to need 84 of these. Um, so I'm going to make about 90 just so we've got some spares. But we're still looking for it to be uh, about two or three millimetres or so. What we're going to do is take a section of Glad Wrap and this is going to help us to create more of a domed effect rather than just a cut out piece of a circle, which is not going to look as realistic. So what we do, stretching the Glad Wrap, place a small cutter, circle cutter. We've got everything in your materials to tell you what it is. Gently pry it away and you'll see here that it's got a really nice dome shape to it um, so it's quite puffy and that's what we're looking for. We're sort of looking for how you have in uh, say a, a sofa, an old sofa or something like that where you've got the really cushy effect and then you've got the brass studs. So in this case we're going to be painting them gold after. All right, so now we've cut all of those out, we're going to start applying them to the cake. And to do that, I'm going to use some royal icing. And what I'm going to do is just apply a tiny bit of royal 
and I'm going to do it in all the same spots down in a row so that that way I can work my way around the cake. So I'm going to take one of these and just rest it on there, just holding for a few seconds so that you know it's in the right spot, you don't want it to slide down. And the same with the next one. So now we're going to get ready to start prepping for our piping on the hexagonal tier. Um, so in your course materials you have this uh, beautiful pattern that we've created and we're going to be applying that to the centre of all of our sides. So what I've gone ahead and done is when I made this I designed it off a nice oval cutter that comes in a set of three that's got the uh, little scroll pattern and also just the plane. So we're going to be using the plane. And I've traced it on with a pencil um, just so that we can then emboss and impress it onto the cake as a guide for ourselves. So I'm going to walk you through doing it on the parchment paper. All you need to do is, it doesn't matter where you place the parchment on there as long as you've got a good amount of space at the bottom. And we're just going to trace over all of the lines. Now you will find that in the center of the oval is a little dot. You want to make sure that you include that in your drawing because we're going to show you how to make it centered on the cake using that. So we're just going to go around, I like to go around the oval first and just making sure that you're holding really carefully onto the parchment paper. Okay, last loop around and remember the dot in the center. Now what we're doing with the dot is it's okay to eyeball certain things for a cake but something structured like this it needs to be absolutely in the middle and whenever you cover it might end up being a slightly different height based on your fillings, your cover job, uh, your thickness of your fondant and your ganache. So what we want to do is measure up the side of the cake exactly to your cake. So then you want to divide it into half and that's where you want your circle to end up. The easiest way to make that happen is to come down from your circle by that much with your ruler and then just make a pencil mark at the end there. Now we can come across and that is going to be the new bottom of your parchment paper and that way you can easily rest it up against the side of the cake and you know that that's as high as it needs to be. You so I've got a couple of these now so we can start attaching them to the cake. We're going to need some pins to do this just so that it holds it in place. I'm going to hold this up against here. I just want to do a quick measurement across before we press too firmly. First pin to go in is the centre one because you're not going to see that at all. The next pin we can put up just a little bit higher. Again on our oval because it's going to be covered up. So that's the really neat thing about this design is that as long as you put everything into the centre it won't move sideways if you've got at least three of them. So now what we're going to do is really gently rub with our fingertips. So the way that we're going to make these ovals that go on our cake is the same technique as we used for the gold studs on our cushioning. Okay, so for, we're going for about four mils or so. Take our plastic wrap, then I'm going to use the smooth oval and just cut out six of them. Okay, so now we're going to attach our ovals to the cake itself. I'm going to use some sugar glue and that's because I need them to set up fairly quickly so I don't want to use a clear alcohol on this and I'm just going to paint a small section in the middle. I'm going to start by holding it up against the bottom so I can see where it needs to go, checking the sides. I 
Okay, so I've replaced my piping tip with a number two this time. We're going to use a number two to do all the way around the outside of our oval. So just make sure you're comfortable with your piping and make sure that the icing is flowing well. And we're going to start by doing the arches that are on top. So working from the bottom of the centre one, travelling up. The key to piping like this is to stay off the cake just a hair, but not too much because you need it to stay stuck to the cake. And working your way down. Coming up and around. We're going to do a little circle with straight underneath. And then do a teardrop by squeezing and then drawing it back down. So we've got our little scrolls that we want to add up in here. So we just squeeze and loop around. Squeeze and loop around. Okay, and then we've got a couple more teardrops that are squeezing and going up this time. Squeeze and then up. All right, in our bottom section, we've got two little loops um, that are larger over here. So we want to go ahead. I like to do the smaller one first so that it doesn't get squished by the bigger one. When you go to add the smaller later and loop around. And release. Now we've got the slightly bigger section so we can add a little bit of extra pressure. Where you see that it's quite puffed out in these spots you want to squeeze and then drag it. So on here we've got a little bit at the start that's a little circle so you squeeze quite a lot of pressure and then drag it around until you get to the next one. And then you can squeeze again, add lots of pressure and keeping that pressure going a little bit more so that it makes it thicker. So we're going to be making a diamond pattern by doing five lines in each direction from the corners. So what I want to do to start with is just mark out with the piping tip about a third of the way down and two thirds of the way down on one side and then come up and do the same on the other side and that just gives me a rough guide for those first lines on those sides. So we start by applying a little bit of pressure to get a dot just so that it really attaches to the cake and then we pull away from the cake and then a little dot at the end to secure it. Coming back down working off that last dot that you have for your final line, making our way up, So the final touch that we need to add to these two tiers is to glam them up a little bit more with the gold. So I'm using the highlighter gold and some clear alcohol, same as what we used for the leaves, um, but we want this to be more of a solid coverage. And we're just going to add it to our buttons or our studs. And we're just basically dabbing it if you brush, you tend to get more of a sheer coverage. Now, if it's getting a little bit too tight, you can take a smaller paintbrush as well. It's a good idea to have both. We just want to come over the top. And just brush really gently over all of that lattice. And then we can switch to our smaller paintbrush and make sure we have lots of the gold in there that it's not too runny. And we'll just start dabbing at that background layer of our oval.
All right, now we're ready to get started on our widest tier. It's also our finest tier in that we're doing some really fine piping string work on this. We're gonna be doing it in black, so the key is to make sure that we mark everything out flawlessly, and that way we'll have a really good guide to follow along. So the first thing that you wanna do is get a perfectly square piece of parchment paper. So you wanna go for an extra wide sheet so that it will cover over the 12 inch cake and then fold it into 16, just by folding it in half and continuing on and folding it all up. Then you'll know exactly where everything is gonna be marked out on the cake. So carefully bring your cake over. And because we know that this is nice and square, we can measure and see, I can see that we need to have a bit of a shove that way. So using one of your lines as a gauge, Okay, so now that's spot on, what we want to do is just map out exactly where all of these lines head to on the cake. So just right up against the cake, we want to make a mark where all the creases are. The great thing with this technique is it doesn't matter how big your cake is. Every time you cover a cake, um, the fondant can be a little bit different in thickness and you might be a few mils off. So with this technique, it doesn't matter. You can still use it every time you do a cake. So now that that's all done, what we're gonna do is mark up, based on these lines, um, place a little hole in the cake just with a toothpick or a scribe tool or a pen, and just mark up one inch exactly, or 25 millimeters. Okay, so now that we've got all of those marked out, I'm going to create the swag shape. And to do that, I'm just using a cookie cutter. Uh, it's about a three and three quarter, I think it's 91, 92 millimetres or so. Um, and this is just gonna provide a nice soft swoop so that it's not too severe. Um, and so at this point, what we're gonna do is just basically take our graphite pencil and hold up our cookie cutter until we can get one of our holes there and they're lined up perfectly. And then we're going to make just a nice gentle mark on the cake, following that around until we reach from our dot to our dot. And that's basically all we need to do as our guide for the bottom part of our string work. Moving that out of the way, I've got a piping bag that has the black in it with a number three tip and I don't want to go any thicker than that otherwise it's going to get too chunky along the bottom. So carefully tilt this in your direction, coming down next to the cake, pressing against it and squeezing so that it starts and attaches and then just pull away from the cake slightly so that you can follow and you want to stay just a couple of mils away from the cake and make sure that it's attaching behind you. Slowly come up and then a little dollop again, just a little bit there, release your pressure and come back over that line to release so that if you do have any extra, it follows that line. It doesn't jut out or up or down. Now, as we go to do our second row, it's really key that we maintain our focus on building out rather than up or down. So as you apply the first one to your cake, now you want to apply your second row to the actual piping itself, just building it out. We're basically going to be building a well so that there's a difference between the cake and the finished part of our string work. So you just want to do the same slow movements, attaching as you start. and just going directly over the top. So you're not going up and you're not going down, you're just building it out. So now we're on to our fourth row and our final row.
Now, it might seem like we're jumping the gun a little bit because we haven't even done our string work, but we need to start stacking our cake. Um, the reason is the black string work when we place the cake on the centre dowel and move it down, we're bending and twisting the cake a little bit. And if we do that with the string work, it could end up breaking. So we don't want that to happen, especially because it's black. So we've already drilled our hole. I've gone ahead and pre-drilled the hole a little bit larger with the uh, drill. Now I'm just going to take a screwdriver. I've measured this so that it will go through all of our cakes and the start of our top tier, but not all of our top tier. It just needs to lock it into place. So the first thing that we're gonna do is bring our board up and just place our screw into there, get it going. So we've pre-derailed um, a hole into the center of our dowel as well. So we're just going to start by twisting it on and just holding onto your dowel and screwing it back all the way up to the top. Okay, so now we're going to apply some royal icing onto the board. Okay, now we're going to create some air and groove holes into it just so that it will help it to dry a little bit faster. We're going to lift that up, just drop it down a little bit, try and keep it as level as we can. And when it just starts to reach and break, we want to brace the cake. Take a spatula and just drop it the last little bit. Okay, we can just get rid of this excess. Okay, so we've popped our cake onto a turntable. Um, now what I'm gonna do is take some blue painter's tape that's one inch and use that as a guide for where to start all of our string work. You don't wanna do string work too long or otherwise it can break really easily. So what we're gonna do is just line this up with the top. So get that out of the way. Now, when we're using this royal icing, we want it to be a lot thicker than what you would usually do for a number one. Um, so normally, the smaller the number, the looser the icing. So it'll be nice and runny. Um, and a number one should have a lot of shine to it. In this case, we're actually going for something that's almost turning matte and is quite thick and sticks to your palette knife really well. Um, so that will enable you to be able to pipe a little bit longer and have a little bit more elasticity in it rather than it breaking on you. Um, we're going to have a paper towel and a paintbrush with us during this as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little dot at the start, pull it down past this line and actually allow it to break off just below where we've got our, our swags. So just do a nice dollop there. Bring it down. Get it to touch and keep going. What we're going to do, eventually you can do a few of these at a time, but you want to go past it so that you don't end up swooping your icing. Um, so that way it'll keep going and extending past. And then you can just come back with a paintbrush and get rid of that. If it wants to come off, there we go. So just a dry paintbrush. Now that we've done all of our braces all the way around, so the highest point and just secured all of those, now they're broken into the little swags and scoops that we've made. So what we're going to do from now on is basically keep breaking those squags in half. So I'm going to do one that goes into the centre and then I'm going to divide that up and divide that up. Squeeze. And come down. just past the line, same as what we did before. Now you can leave that one there for a moment. Divide that into half again, squeeze. And again go past. And then we're going to go into the middle. And then 
center half again. Remembering every time to go past that line because that's what stops you from bowing out inwards. Break that off and then we can come back with our paintbrush. Just brush them down. Okay, and there we go. Absolutely perfect. We've got 254 perfectly straight lines and that's our bottom tier. Okay, so now let's get the rest of the cake all stacked up. I've got all of our tiers and what I want to start doing is putting some dowels into this bottom tier to support our next one, which is our hexagon. So I've got some uh, little dowels, wooden, I actually use wooden ones um, that are not particularly tall because we don't need them to be. Um, and I don't want them to go too far out either because with the hexagonal shape, we want to make sure that none of them get too close to the edge. So just take one of them, make sure they've got a pointy end and just mark out where you're going to place four more. This is much taller than our first cake. Our first cake, we just pushed it straight through. But with this one, um, there's going to be a fair amount of cake that wants to come back through here. So I've taken uh, a circle cutter. It's actually just a little bit bigger than the hole that we made when we were doing our board. And grab a tape measure and just measure where the center of your hexagon is. Remember to get right into the center. It won't go the whole way, obviously, but it will just help a little bit. Before, when we first started, we dug out a little section of the underneath of the cake anyway. So now we're just basically doing the same on the top. So just press it through. Give it a little bit of a twist. And that will help to get rid of some of that cake so that it's not such a challenge. Okay, so now this is our front, so we want to make sure that we have one of our sides as our front as well. Lifting it up, get our centre, and just slowly let it drop down. You don't want to do it too quickly, otherwise it will burst the top. We're going to do the exact same thing again, no difference at all. Again, we'll get to a spot where we can get a spatula underneath instead of my fingertips and drop it down. And then we'll do the, um, some dowels again. This time, we need to bear in mind that all we're putting on is our little elevated tip. So we need to make sure we stay really close to where it's going to be. Okay, and we're going to stick our separator on. We'll drop that down and give that a nice firm press. So now we'll take our top tier, place it on, making sure that we've got our nice section here on our left. So now I'm just attaching our black ribbon to our cake board with some double sided tape. It's a lot easier than using a glue or anything like that. Let's just wrap that around. And because we've got a little bit of elevation, I've gone for a 10 millimeter just so it, it looks a little bit chunkier because this cake has so much presence and it's a little bit sort of larger than life. So we want to continue that on with everything. Now, bringing back our flowers from the very beginning, um, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can insert them into the cake. So we're going to have um, down the bottom, we'll have our five uh, leaves over to this side with one of our flowers. And I'm going to show you how you can just wrap those if you don't have a, a flower vial or you don't wish to use a flower vial, depending on the height of the tears and things like that. 
So a flower vial is originally for fresh flowers, but it's also great for sugar flowers when you don't want to insert the wires directly into the cake. So you can simply pop everything into that and this is inside the cake. So I'll start by doing this on top. Basically we want to work from our central point that we have, hold on to the cake and brace it and you can just push that straight down into the cake. And that'll be tucked in there and hidden away. We can place our leaves, which I want to have coming off towards the left hand side. And if you want to, you can even wind these and your flower together at this point. But I like to have them separate just so that I can take a look and change the angles until I'm happy. So that's a flower vial method, which is nice and easy and very safe. Now, if you've got sugar flowers and you don't have a flower vial or you have it in a tight cramped spot like we do here, if you take some of your parafilm, you just want to make sure that you wrap all of the wire. So all of those bits that are exposed, you're going to wrap over stretching just like we did at the start and wrapping on a diagonal and then over the top of the base. And then you can wind it straight back up again and that way you know it's completely covered in the parafilm. So with these we want them to come out a little bit so we'll give them a bend. Now I'm going to place the flower in first just so that we can get the position that we're happy with. So I want it to be tucked in between the layers so it really won't be going through very much cake at all anyway. So we're going to place that through and we're basically going to slide it straight in there and then come back and bring our leaves in. We'll tuck those in in the same spot, a little bit of a push 